Let's go. Let's do this. Oh, this is going to be good tonight. This is going to be good tonight. Wow. Wow. Oh, this is going to be so good. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is going to be good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. 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 Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I'm doing this because <clears throat> we started talking last week about, oh, I mean, the Lord just gave us that word, right? I mean, we just start off praying and the Lord gave us that word about the glory of the word. The glory of the Lord and the glory of the word. I, I don't think I'd ever thought about that, at least not in that on that level. But last week when we were praying, you guys, I saw my Bibles, and I'm just talking about in my mind, in my spirit, just I saw my Bible laying open like this. And I saw just It's hard to explain, but just this golden, almost golden rainbow of light just coming up and emanating out of the word. It's like this big kind of half circle or kind of a rainbow, but just, just, and that's what I saw, the glory, the glory of the word. The glory of the Lord. Yes. We've talked about, we've heard about that many times. The glory of the word. I said, wow. And then, of course, the Lord showed us a lot of things about that. Well, he gave me, oh, man. I tend my morning time with him this morning. He just, he took me back on that, on that just down that path of thinking about the glory. The glory. The glory. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. I said, wow. And so he started showing me some things. And so I, wanna, I want to show you guys these things and, and just deepen your level of revelation your level of understanding in terms of the glory <laughs> i mean man i mean you you can't man how does it get better than the glory of god how does it get better than the glory of god the glory of the lord the glory of the word oh man i'm telling you it's so good it's so good Okay, so let's first start in the book of Ezekiel, and let's go to chapter one. Now, the book of Ezekiel, I mean, man, this is one, I mean, 
man, I love, I love the book of Ezekiel. Especially in these early chapters. I mean, oh my goodness. The visions that he had, I mean, just amazing. So let's look at this. So let's look at Ezekiel chapter one. And let's start in verse 24. Now, this is powerful. Now, he's talking about, I mean, he starts off the very first verse talking about that he was at the river of Kabar and that the heavens were open and that he saw the visions of God. And so now he starts to go through and detail some of these visions that he had while he was standing here by the river. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we're doing this. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now here we go. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't. Just read it. You, I'm not going to give you the backstory leading up, but just, just read it. Um, but starting in verse 24, he says, and when they went, I was talking about the living creatures that he was seeing in this vision. He said, when they went, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters. like the noise of great waters as the voice of the almighty the voice of speech or it says the sound of a tumult as the noise of a host or the noise of an army this is what he's hearing right now. And when they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. And when they stood, they had let down their wings. And above the firmament, that was above their heads, now look at this, was the likeness of a throne. I love, oh, I love this. The likeness of a throne. As the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man. Above it. Now we know who that is. That's the Lord Jesus. Now look at this. <laughs> Come on, look at this. And I, I saw as the color of amber, as the as the appearance of fire round about and within it. I'm talking about, listen now. There was fire all around it and within it. I mean, the whole entire thing was fire. The whole entire thing was fire. Fire surrounding it, fire within. My goodness. From the appearance of his loins, even up, I mean, it's from the appearance of his waist, from the appearance of his waist and up, look at this, and from the appearance of his loins, even down, I saw as it were the appearance of fire. So what he's saying is, he sees this throne all around this throne, is fire 
and within the throne is fire. And then he sees the one sitting on the throne and from the waist up and from the waist down, he is fire. He is fire. He is fire. Watch this now and watch this, watch this. And it had brightness round about. So not only you know, was this throne surrounded by fire, fire within the throne, the one sitting on the throne, fire from the waist up and fire from the waist down. But also it had the brightness all around him. It had the brightness all around it. This is the glory of the Lord. Look at this. As the appearance of the bow, the rainbow, as the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. He is so bright. There's a rainbow surrounding. So bright. So bright. <laughs> now look at this. Look at this. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Man. Now we're getting into something here. He said, this was the appearance of the glory of the Lord. The appearance of The appearance of the glory of the Lord. The fire. The brightness all around. The bright rainbow all around. This was the glory of the Lord. And he said, and when I saw it, I fell upon my face. And watch this. And I heard a voice of one that spoke. Yeah. He said, and when I saw it, I fell on my face. And then I heard a voice of one that spoke. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon your feet and I will speak to you. <laughs> oh, man. Now look at this. And the spirit entered into me when he spake to, when he spoke unto me. He said the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. That's the glory of the Lord. When the glory of the Lord, when the glory of the word speaks to you, the spirit enters into you. He speaks to you in the glory of his word. He speaks to you in the glory of his, his spoken word to your heart. The glory of that word, when that enters into you, the spirit enters into you. And the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. And he set me upon my feet that I heard him that spoke unto me. And then he goes into essentially the mission the Lord had for him to deal with the rebellious house of Israel and to go on to speak the word to them. 
I want you to see a number of things here. Let's see, where should we start here, Lord? Let's just start somewhere. Hmm. We'll start with the fire. He said, I saw the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about and within it from his waist up and his waist down. So the first thing we can see about the glory of the Lord is the glory of the Lord is his fire. It's the fire of God. It's fire. Fire. Oh, watch this. Okay, hold on a minute. Let's, let's, we're, we're okay. Okay, go to Exodus 29, 43. We're coming back to this. Um, we're going to, we're going to, this is going to be kind of our anchor. Let's go to Exodus 29. He's showing me this right now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's start in verse 42. Well, hold on a minute. So he's giving them he's giving them some instructions on the wave offering. And um no, I'm sorry, this one, I think this one's the sin. Let's see. Yes, yeah, sin offering for the atonement. Now he says on verse 38, now this is what you'll do, what you'll offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, the other you'll offer at evening. And uh, with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with uh, oil, and then a fourth part of wine for a drink offering. And then the other lamb you shall offer at evening and uh, do there according to the meat offering of the morning and according to the drink offering for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And there I will meet with the children of Israel. Watch this. And the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. The tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. It 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 shall be sanctified by my glory, he says. See? See, and as you go and read through, particularly with Moses, when they had the tabernacle, and um, and they had the Ark of the Covenant, it would often say that upon the the mercy seat would sit would sit the fire, one as of fire, the fire. That's the glory of the Lord. See, in his, his glory will sanctify the tabernacle. Now watch this. Now we apply that two ways. We apply that, first of all, to the church, you know, to, well, actually in several ways. I'm just going to tell you. We apply that to the church, okay, to the place where we come to worship the Lord. We apply that to our very own tabernacle because he said that, that we are living tabernacles for him a, a dwelling place for him for the glory of the lord he said christ in you the hope of glory 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 the hope of glory see we are his tabernacle we are his tabernacle he lives in us now we are now 
his tabernacle, his resting place. And the glory of the Lord sanctifies that temple, that tabernacle, that temple, the temple of the Lord. And that's 1 Corinthians 6, 17 through 19. All right, let's get back to Ezekiel now. That was this nice little detour there for you. Okay, now let's get back into this. So that's the fire, that's the fire. That's the fire, that's the fire. That's the fire. Mm. Now look at this, and he says, I saw it were as it were the appearance of fire. And it had brightness round about, 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 brightness round about. Now look at this. Okay, let me say this first of all. Well, okay, let's let's finish this first, and then I'll come back to some of this other stuff. So, hold your place. You know, let's go to First John one five. The brightness, we're talking about the brightness of the glory, the brightness. And he said, and this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. He is light itself. Now we can look at that at surface level and say, yeah, I mean, we how many times have we read that verse? How many times have we heard that? But I'm telling you, the Lord started talking about that this morning. That he is light. He is light. He is light. He is light itself. He is pure and complete light. It says there is no darkness in him at, at all. So if he is light, how bright is that light? Man. You know, <clears throat> later on in the book of the revelation of Jesus, and you know what I think? Jeremiah also talked about this, actually. Wait, was it Jeremiah? It was either Isaiah or Jeremiah, but I think it was Jeremiah. But in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, very, towards the very end, one of the last chapters, 19, 20, 21, somewhere in there, probably, I think it's 20 or 21. But it talks about how in heaven, there is no night. There's no sun. There's no moon. There is no sun. Because Jesus lights up. Everything. So, I mean, he is so much light that he lights all heaven, earth, everything. 
he even says, I don't, I don't understand fully how this can work, but it's so there's so much light just from Jesus himself that there's not even a shadow in heaven. <laughs> I mean, I'll figure that one out. That's how much light there is because, because he is complete and absolute light and in him is no darkness at all. And his light is so consuming. Oh my goodness. His light is so consuming that you can't even see. You can't even see a shadow. Man. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's amazing. There's, you can't even see a shadow because it's nothing. It's nothing but light. There's no darkness. There's no evil. I mean, there's nothing. And all it takes to light everything up is the Lord himself. He doesn't need anything else. That, that is how much light he is. He is light itself. Oh. He is light. 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 He's light. Woo! Nothing but light. Nothing, nothing, nothing but light. Nothing, nothing, nothing but light. Nothing, nothing, nothing but light. Oh, man. Wow. He's light. He's light. He's light. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Wow. Man, I even forgot some of the stuff the Lord showed me. All right. <laughs> Hmm. All right, look at this. Go to uh let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, what's he got here? What's he got? Yeah, okay. So let's go. Okay, look at this. Okay, go back to the book of Ezekiel, but now this time go to the uh chapter 10. Oh, I love this. Um, Ezekiel chapter 10. We'll start in verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Maybe we'll read five as well. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone. As the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go, go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill your hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. Now the cherubims stood on the right side of the house when the man went in. Look at this. And the cloud filled the inner court. Oh, I love that. The cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub. And the glory of the Lord stood over the threshold of the house, over the door. 
and the house or the temple was filled with the cloud. And the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. <laughs> and the house or the temple was filled with the cloud. And I forgot to say this, we were talking earlier about the temple, how the glory sanctified the temple. Now we talked about the church temple, we talked about your body temple, but also, hey, your home, your home is your temple. Your home is your dwelling place. Your home should be God's dwelling place. Oh, oh man, he sanctifies it with his glory. Now look at this. And he also fills it with the cloud. And the court was full of the brightness, the brightness, the light, the pure brightness of the Lord's glory. The Lord's glory. The Lord's glory. So what I'm saying is, it's the brightness, the light of his glory, the light of his glory, the light of his glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the almighty God when he speaks. All right. Now, okay. The brightness of the Lord's glory. Okay. All right. Let me. Okay. <clears throat> now let me say this. And I probably should have started here, but I didn't for whatever reason. But. Just to give you a little more insight into the glory of the Lord, the glory, the glory. So I went into the Strong's Concordance and I looked it up here um, from, you know, this scripture and Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 8, which we'll probably look at too, um, and several other places. But, and you know what, let me look at this once. Let's see. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. But I think it showed that that word glory is used in the Old Testament 200 times. 200 times. Now, what it means is it means abundance. <laughs> what? It means abundance. Glory is defined as abundance. See, the glory of the Lord is the abundance of the Lord. It's also defined as honor. 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 Um. It's also defined abundance and riches, abundance and riches, splendor, reverence, the splendor, look at this, it's the splendor of his wealth, it's the splendor of his wealth. The splendor of his wealth. The splendor of his wealth. Wow. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, here we go. Mm. Oh yeah, go back to Ezekiel one really quick. Let me show you this. I think we were talking about this. I read this in one of the commentaries um, where it says, because you'll see this often, especially with Ezekiel. He, when he, when he sees these visions of the Lord, he 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 often describes. And in fact, you know what? Yes, that's true. That's true, Lord. Thank you. Um, he says. Oh, here we go. Yeah, in verse 26, uh, he said the likeness of the throne and the appearance of a sapphire stone. The appearance of a sapphire stone. And then he says in the book of the Revelation, in chapter four, let me look at this really quick. He calls it... Um, He said, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and the one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine or a sardius stone. Look at this. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald and he he describes it that way too or in other places um ezekiel describes him as that that emerald but that sapphire i read in one of the commentaries it says the sapphire represents um it represents the wealth of god the riches of god the abundance the beauty the splendor the majesty of God. See, they always describe him with the with just these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stones. The sapphire stone, the emerald, the jasper stone, the sardius stone. It just, it gives you a picture of the beauty of God. It gives you a picture of the wealth, the wealth of God, the riches and the richness of God. See, remember, God is so multifaceted. I mean, I'm telling you, for all of eternity, we are going to be constantly learning more about him. And there is so much about him to know and to learn and to get to know. We will never run out of things to learn. I mean, he is so multifaceted. Okay, okay, yeah, let me show you this. Well, let me look at something really quick. Let me just check this out real quick. Hmm. Well, let's just let's just show you this. Go to Ezekiel 8. Verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me.
And that's exactly how he starts out in chapter 1, verse 3. It said, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest by the river Kabar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Oh, my! And he says back to Ezekiel 8, the, the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo! a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his waist even downward fire from his waist even upward as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber and he put forth the form of a hand and he took me by a lock of my head or by a lock of my hair and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Watch this. The spirit always lifts you up. Oh, man. Look at this. The spirit always lifts you up. Oh, come on now. The spirit always lifts you up. Oh, that's so good. The spirit always lifts you up. So the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me into the visions of God, to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes the Lord to jealousy. So it's, it's uh, it says the idol of jealousy that provokes um the Lord to jealousy. And behold, look at this. And behold, and behold, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Now he's talking about that, the river Kabar, where that he describes that first vision in chapter one. And then he said unto me, then he said unto me, then he said unto me, then he said unto me. See, the Lord always speaks out of the glory. The Lord always speaks out of the glory. And you remember, we've talked about that. We've mentioned it the last couple of weeks where, you know, in the Bible, whenever anybody has an encounter with the Lord, very rarely do they record what they saw or what the Lord looked like. Now, Ezekiel is the one exception. One of the few. But watch this. They always record what he says. <laughs> I mean, but and and it's no different with Ezekiel. Yeah. Now he recorded what he saw, the visions and what he saw, but he always recorded what the Lord said. Remember, the glory of the word, the glory of the word. Oh, that's good. Now, the glory of the word okay so he always speaks out of the way now go back to hmm. man so he says the same thing in ezekiel 3 well okay hold on a minute hold on, hold on. let's 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 we'll, we'll get there we'll get there okay go back to ezekiel 1 And so he describes what he sees, and he says in verse 28, this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard the voice of one that spoke. Hmm. 
He says, he said, when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spoke. See, he always speaks out of the glory. He always speaks out of the glory. Um, go to Ezekiel, no, Exodus chapter 24. I mean, if there's anybody that knows about the glory of the Lord, it's Moses, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Jeez. Wow. Hmm. Look at this. Look at this. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this is what I was going to tell you. <laughs> It's like, whoa, look at this. Yeah, that's because the Lord picked this out already. Okay. Um, uh, look at verse nine. Then went up Moses and Aaron and uh, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, it talks about this in the book of the Revelation as well, how it, it says under his feet was um, a sea of glass. And I think it even describes it as a sapphire. But what's interesting about that, well, this, this is what I think. Um, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I know where that's at. Yeah, that's it right there in uh, uh, Revelation, the Revelation chapter four. I read the first, we read uh, verses two and three, but if you look at verse five, it says, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal in the midst of the throne. And round about the throne were four beasts. Now, I wonder if it was what I was looking up from that 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 portion in Exodus. But see, sapphires are often blue, and it and there's something else I saw. Man, what was that? But it 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 talked about the sky being underneath his feet. And I don't know. I just just kind of the way I was looking at it was, you know, they're seeing that they're seeing that sapphire like this paved work of a sapphire stone under his feet in the clearness because it's, it's like he's above the sky, right? It, kind of, maybe I'm, and I, I could be stretching that. I don't know, but that's just the way that I saw it. And so go down now and he said, uh, verse 15, look at this. Okay, and so anyways, at, so at that, and then they said, um, he, the Lord said unto Moses, hey, come up unto me to the mount. And this, in other words, by himself. And that's when the Lord was going to give him the Ten Commandments. He said, I get you tables of stone, I'm going to write them. Which, I mean, think about that in of itself. I mean, the Lord gave him two. Now, who knows how big those were, but I mean, I'm mean, I saying, I did the Ten Commandments. I know that would be pretty big, pretty heavy. They were written in stone with the finger of God. 
sometimes you think about this stuff and it's just, you're like, whoa, what? The 10 commandments were written in stone with the finger of God. He just, he just took his finger, just edged right into that stone. You ever wonder what the handwriting was like? <laughs> Wonder, I wonder what kind of handwriting God has. Oh my. I mean, that's got to be the most beautiful, intricate, just elaborate handwriting you've ever seen in your life. Man. Anyways, so he told, told Moses, hey, Moses, you come up to me unto the mount and be there. So, of course, Moses did. He always did it, man. He did. He rose up down in verse 15. So Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the oh, man, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. Oof! Wow. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called <clears throat> unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now think about this. Moses sat up there for six days in the cloud of the glory of God. Just waiting. Just waiting. He's just, just waiting. Wow. Six days just sitting there, just waiting. And the seventh day, he called out to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Look at this. What does it say? And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Now look at this. Oh, I love this. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud. Oh, he went into the midst, into the midst midst of the cloud of the glory look at this and get him up into the mount and moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights okay we'll stop there but i want you to see a couple things you know first of all again what does it say how does moses describe him this fire, this fire, he is in all, the Bible says that he is an all-consuming fire. Let him consume you as that fire. Let him be that fire that consumes you. <laughs> Just let him consume you. Now, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's what I was going to say. See, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire. That's that all-consuming fire. See, that fire sanctifies the temple. That fire devours anything that is not of him. <laughs> Man, you can't. You, 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 you give in to the glory of the Lord. You yield to the glory of the Lord. Fear can't stand. Huh? Poverty can't stand. Sickness, disease, death can't stand in the face of the glory of God. No, no, no chance. 
Oh, but I love that. He, he, he stepped into the midst of the cloud of the glory of God. So we see the glory as the fire. We see the glory as, 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 um, as the brightness. We see the glory of the Lord speaking. And now here we see the glory as a cloud. The glory of a cloud. It says the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered him. And the glory of the Lord came in the, in the form of the cloud. Oh, look at this. Look what it says. It says, in verse 18, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and he was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, <laughs> the Lord spoke. So what happened? When the glory shows up, the Lord speaks. He always speaks out of that glory. He always speaks out of his glory. He always speaks out of his glory. The same thing happened with Ezekiel. The glory of the Lord showed up and then he said, and then I heard the voice of one speaking. And he spoke unto me. And as he spoke unto me, the spirit entered into me. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, you know what? Okay, God, there's, there's so much more, but I feel the Lord saying, okay, let's wrap it there for tonight. And I'm, and I'm suspecting that we'll get into this then again next, because there's more that he showed me, and maybe he has more that he will show me even beyond this. I mean, that'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, we do have quite a bit yet that we didn't even get to. So there's definitely more to say. There's definitely more to talk about. And believe me, I mean, just what he's showing me, this is not like, this is the all-encompassing study of the glory of God. And, you know, this is, all, no, I mean, this is just a small fraction. These are just some of the things that he showed me this morning in regards to the glory of God. So let's, let's end it there. <clears throat> and let's... Uh, Let's thank the Lord for this, this wonderful word tonight. Let's thank him for his glory. Father, we thank you for the glory of the word. We thank you for the glory of the word that you shared with us tonight. We thank you for the glory of your word. We thank you for the glory of the Lord, the fire of God, the brightness, the light, the cloud. We're so thankful. Lord, we ask for you to consume us with yourself. Consume us with your glory. Consume us with your all-consuming fire. <sighs> Consume us, Lord. Consume us. Consume us with your all-consuming fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.